Hi, I'm Mark Tyrrell of Uncommon Knowledge and welcome to Treating Trauma That Hasn't Happened Yet. How I treat imaginative trauma, such as fear of flying or fear of public speaking. Imagine this, you're terrified, you're scared witless and it feels like you're about to die. And you might ask yourself, how will it ever be all right? How will you survive this? And you feel traumatized, not by a past experience, but by the prospect of a future one. Now it's important to remember that imagination is so powerful. And occasionally I get a traumatized client who hasn't actually had a traumatic experience, but they're still suffering because they've traumatized themselves through their imagination of some future event. Now one thing I do when a client comes to me with such a fear is to go into extremely calm and objective detail about what will likely happen in this upcoming event that they're terrified of and yet they've never experienced before. Now probably 99% of the time we treat people for experiences that they have actually had. You know, the, So whether it's an assault or a phobic memory or some other terrifying past event. Generally speaking you could have had a whole uh, therapeutic career and just use say the rewind technique for traumas that have actually happened. But occasionally I'll use rewind for something that hasn't happened such as a speech that someone's got upcoming, um, maybe it's a presentation they have to give next week and they've never done a presentation before and they've terrified themselves through their imagination of the experience. So you know maybe as I said it's the first presentation they've ever done and what I want to do is to give them a template for the experience. Um, so I might describe, because I have a lot of experience with public speeches, I might describe the way it kind of goes. Okay. So generally the first couple of minutes your arousal levels are a little bit higher when you give a speech. Then they'll tend to go down as your um, unconscious mind realizes you're not, you're not going to be attacked by this alien tribe, you know, that actually some of them are quite friendly and you're into your stride. Uh, some people look friendly in the audience, some people more blank. Um, this happens and that happens and you switch your slides and often hopefully people will laugh at the right places, at the jokes, and at the end people clap and some people will, will come up to you afterwards. So I'm just describing a typical sequence of events in the situation that they've terrified themselves over. I'll describe the whole uh, pattern of the speech and then rewind them back through it and then fast forward them through it again so that we can take out the kinesthetic effect, the emotional arousal from the experience ahead of time. So you're, you're kind of doing positive future rehearsal um, within the rewind, you're incorporating the rewind technique, um, the de-traumatization technique um, into that future rehearsal. So you know when they're seeing themselves do the speech and fast forward, they're seeing themselves look relaxed, calm, approachable and enthusiastic or whatever other characteristics you'd like to have, uh, that they'd like to have in their presentation. So for flying, again, we want to set the template. We want to lay out the whole experience so it all feels familiar when it does happen, even though it will be the first time. So I'll describe to them the experience of flying in quite some detail. And the reason I'll do it in quite some detail is that every bit that they then encounter of what I've previously described they can inwardly think, ah yes, he said that would happen. So that's entirely normal. Okay. So if they've envisaged some horror story uh, to do with the flying, I certainly don't discuss that with them in great depth or get them to visualize that. You know, I don't want to embed that deeper within their psyche. So I won't do that. The only time I did that, in fact, was with a guy who'd been on a flight and he'd taken some LSD before the flight and he had fallen asleep during this trip in two senses of the word on the flight and he would experienced the plane crashing in his uh, trip induced dream and then he'd woken up and then the plane had really been crashing but that was a dream within a dream and then finally he really woke up and realized the plane wasn't crashing but then he was traumatized by the imagination produced by his acid trip so we rewound the memory of, of that and then he could fly again but that, that was an extreme, that was quite a rare kind of ex, um, client really to, to work with. So, but what we can do otherwise 
if someone's never flown before, is we can almost bore the fear out of them, which sounds a really weird technique. But if someone's never flown before and they have uh, some made up horrible scenario as to what it's going to be like in their minds, then I'll say something like this to them. Say, uh, this is what it's generally like when you travel. You know, you pack your bags, uh, maybe set your alarm for the next day. Um, you travel to the airport, of course. You start seeing signs for the airport on, on, on the freeway. You know, um, you'll arrive at the airport. Maybe you'll park your car or you'll get off the bus or whatever. You'll find the terminal that you're flying from. You'll stand in line to check in. You'll go through security. You would have had to have probably shown um, ID at some point. Uh, then finally you'll wait around in departures. Uh, there might be shops and stuff in departures. There might be f lots of families and other people around. Uh, you'll have a call at some point to go to the plane through the tannoy. And you'll find where your gate is and you'll go down the sort of tin tunnel thing onto the plane and there'll be someone greeting you on the plane I'm sure and then you'll find a little uh, there'll be a little time you finding your seat uh, other people are milling around you'll sit down uh, after having put your bag in the overhead locker you'll fasten your seat belt some point before you take off there'll be a safety demonstration no doubt you'll taxi down the runway uh, at some point the engines will start to roar that can that can seem quite loud you'll gather speed and there'll be a, a point at which you're not sure whether you're you, you're actually you've taken off you're in the air or you're still on the ground okay and then it can feel quite steep as you're going up but from the outside it never looks as steep as it feels from the inside you know and after 10 minutes you'll level off you'll find your flight path uh, there'll be a pinging noise, which means that people can now mill around again and use the toilet. Okay. Uh, there'll be food and drinks served at that point or, or at some point in the flight. And, and, but also sometimes there'll be a, a, a bit of turbulence, just like there is on a boat on the sea. You know, if you're on the sea, it's seldom just completely flat. There's usually a bit of this going on. It's the same when you fly. And you'll notice that. And sometimes it might even feel a bit traumatic and a bit things are shaking around a bit. But from half a mile away, it looks as if the plane is entirely smooth. Okay, it's only on the inside that it feels a bit more dramatic. But from outside, it looks entirely smooth. And sometimes you can imagine how you're looking from the outside. So I'll describe the whole thing. Sometimes you'll be bored when you're flying. Sometimes you'll forget that you're on a plane. You know, you might be watching a movie and absorbed in that or having a conversation or reading a book and you're sort of forget about the fact that you're flying. Um, you know, then I'll describe coming into land and the whole thing in quite some detail. So the template is in there. The blueprint for the experience um, is in there. Um, I don't tend to use that in hypnosis, but I might do with someone. But we can be quite hypnotic conversationally when we talk about that. Then I'll describe and, and, and I'll suggest that they can close their eyes and they can, in a few moments, just rewind through the whole experience. So we take them to the end of the flight when we're coming out at the other airport, and then we're rewinding them back in time through that experience very calmly that they haven't had yet, and to before they even uh, pack their belongings. Okay. Then I'll get them to fast forward through the whole experience, uh, suggesting that time can fly when they're on the plane, and get them to see it from the outside and rewinding and fast forwarding and rewinding and fast forwarding until I've stripped the imagined experience of any kinesthetic effect. Then I'll get them to really focus on where they're going, not just how they're getting there. It's almost as if they can have amnesia for how they got there when they arrive. It's almost like you can f sort of forget about the flight, just be dimly aware of it. So I'll suggest highway hypnosis, which is a common thing, you know, where you drive somewhere and when you arrive, uh, you don't know how you got there. You, you do know how you got there, but you don't really remember much of the drive because you're on sort of automatic pilot. Okay. And you were driving safely, but you were just going through the motions. You weren't thinking about it too much. So you have amnesia. And it'll be the holiday, the vacation that your client remembers, not how they got there and how they got back again. So that's how I'd really sort of approach um, an imagined uh, future scenario that someone's kind of traumatized themselves over.
You're, re you're rewinding the imagined scenario, but not some catastrophic imagining that they've had of it. You know, you're rewinding it going as it will go. You're creating a healthy and realistic template. The realistic template is nothing dramatic, um, just a, a normal flight. Okay. So this is a realistic template and you always go for reality, for realism with your client. So hopefully that's been useful. And if you did find that useful, please hit like and subscribe. And if, and if you want to hear when my next video is published, hit the notification bell below. I'm Mark Terrell of Uncommon Knowledge, and if you'd like to subscribe to my email newsletter, you can find it over at unk.com slash blog. That's unk.com slash blog. Thanks for watching. Thank you.